So you know and I know that in order to succeed in the online space today, you gotta have an email list. So today I wanna talk all about how to grow your email list with a podcast. So let's get right to it. Hey y'all, Crystal here again today, and I'm excited to share with you something that is so much fun. It's growing your email list with a podcast. And I know on the surface, you're like, Crystal, that really doesn't sound that exciting, but I promise you, I make this so much fun because I have a different approach to it. So I want you to consider exactly who your audience is and what you can offer them. And I did a talk recently for the Pod Houston podcast community, and I'm really excited. I'm going to share with you a clip from the talk that I did there back in October of last year, and it's just going to be so much fun. So let's just get right to it. Happen once you step out of your comfort zone. So, are you ready? Are y'all ready? Okay, I'm just like, trying to prime y'all and get you ready because we're gonna dive into some good stuff. So let's do this. And I love this. This says buckle up, buttercup, because we're going. Okay, so why is an email list important? If you're gonna take notes, I suggest it, that that's encouraged, but I told Ozeal, I'm going to give him the slides so y'all can have this whole presentation afterwards. If you're in the Facebook group, though, this is another incentive. You got to join the Facebook group. It's not personal. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> but it gives you a list of qualified leads. So, what exactly does that mean? Like, what are qualified leads? How can you use an email list that is full of qualified leads? So, the first obvious one is to sell products. If you have a business, this is a great opportunity. Even if you have a brick and mortar business, and you're starting a podcast, it's a great opportunity for you to sell your products or sell your merchandise. Like there's so many ways that you can do it to sell something. It's also great for affiliate programs. If you are thinking about, if you have a product or a service that you absolutely love, there's a good chance in 2019, there is an affiliate program for it. And who is the biggest one that you can think of? Amazon. I was hoping just one person would live, like five people. I was going to give away a gift card, but y'all got to try harder this time. So, um, but yeah, Amazon is one of the, it's one of the best places. And it's where I encourage everybody to get started. If you're interested in affiliates, that's another way to use your email list. But this is where I want to talk to the people, really everybody, but especially the people that are saying, Crystal, I have no desire to have a business. I just want to talk, interact with my listeners and have my podcast. But I did not live here when Harvey happened, okay? We have recently moved to the Houston area. I was not here. But could you imagine if you had a qualified email list and a natural disaster happened and you said, guys, we are rallying to raise money for the Red Cross to support these people that are displaced. We are going down to Home Depot and Lowe's, we're gonna take stuff to a church, we are going to help them out. So it's not just about making money, it's about making a difference in some sort of way. So that is something else you can do with a qualified email list. And then of course, have the audience independent of social media. If you're on any platform, this year you would have seen all the things that have happened. Do you remember when Instagram was down and thousands of people were freaking out? And it's funny because like it could happen in like this short amount of time, but everybody knows about it and everybody's talking about like people are calling people like, oh, you know, did you know our phones make phone calls? Like that's what they're for. It's not just for social media. Like that's everyone's freaking out. And so there was like other, it's like I had it was so easy for me to just go find pictures because there were so many instances just this year of social media going down. <laughs> what happened to my email list whenever social media goes down? Nothing, nothing happens. My, my they're all still there. My entire website, you know, hopefully, like I don't wanna wheel anything. I don't want anything to happen to anybody's website or anybody's social media, but if something were to go down, you have your list. It is independent from all these platforms, even YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, all of these places where everyone 
is thinking about building a platform, they need to be foundationally built on your email list. Okay, setting up an email list. The first thing you have to do is create your freebie. You can read that, can't read that. But a freebie can be referred to as a lead magnet, an opt-in, a free resource, free download. There's so many different ways that people explain what a freebie is. But for this training, I'm just gonna say freebie, it makes it easier. So, so I want you to think about who is your ideal listener? What are some of the things that they struggle with? And maybe you're like, I have an entertainment podcast. Like my people don't struggle with anything. They struggle, their pain point is they're looking for a laugh. Maybe they like, they have a terrible home life or something crazy, go they're going through a divorce, they're going through something crazy, they just lost a loved one and they are just looking for someone to brighten their day. That is a pain point still. So this applies to every genre of podcast. What are your ideal listeners pain points? What are some of their biggest fears? What is a problem that they need solved? So I love the example of a real estate agent. Do we have any real estate agents in here? Okay, so as a real estate agent, you have so many opportunities because people are buying a home. They are selling a home. They may be renting a home. There are so many opportunities for you to say, hey, I can solve your problem. I can give you a checklist of things that we can go through, or these are the questions that I get asked all the time. It gets almost annoying how much the same questions come up over and over again. So that is an opportunity to connect with an ideal listener. And then again, like I said, frequently asked questions. This can apply to everybody because I want you to go through your private messages, your emails, the things that people are constantly asking you in your family, at dinner parties, and they're just like, hey, I need help with this. Let me pick your brain about that. Frequently asked questions are something great for you to consider whenever you're thinking about your ideal listener. And where are they just saying, help, help, I need your help. So how can you help? Now, I'm gonna put all of these up on the screen. Oh, by the way, like I said, I have three boys, so the Legos, like, yeah. It's very relatable, very relatable, especially at two o'clock in the morning when you accidentally step on one. <laughs> yeah, that's not so much fun. And then, um, so if you wanna jot these down, that's great, but these are some of the cool things that make great freebies. Checklists are the easiest thing to start with. Great, and that's simple. And again, going back to the $5 gift card, it's something of value, but it's also something that they can consume in a short amount of time. Because sometimes, I know for, this will vary from audience to audience, but my audience are mostly women that are busy juggling either a career, a family, they're, they're just juggling multiple things. So they're just like, I just need help with this one problem, can you help me solve this problem in a short amount of time? Then you have workbooks, which could be short PDFs, just like an ebook. When I say ebook, I consider that anything between, I mean, it could be 10 pages to 100 pages. So it, like, don't think of it as the next great American novel necessarily, right? It could just be something short. Quizzes, who loves to take those quizzes where you're like, which friend's character am I? Which Disney princess would I be? Or what kind of rock? I've seen some really weird stuff. So I'm just, yeah, I've seen some crazy quizzes, but people like to see that. They like to see themselves where it's like holding up a mirror and they're like, that is right. I am that kind of person. I am Phoebe from Friends. Come on, I'm a little quirky, a little weird, like, and I'm okay with it. Then you have videos and webinars, which YouTube makes so easy to do. If, you're, if you enjoy video, I suggest you start here. If you hate video and that is why you're a podcaster, then don't start with that. Like that, that's a terrible idea. And don't just do it because Susie Q did it over here because it's not gonna work for you. If that's not what your audience, like your audience can feel whether you're being genuine or not. And then frequently asked questions that are answered. So some examples, I just put some up here. These are some, like these, this is like a five page PDF. This is, I think on three pages, this is five pages. Like all of these, these are just different examples of something that someone could sit down and digest very quickly. Then I have 500 podcast ideas, okay? Like this is my gifting. 
is to come up with ideas. So if you're sitting out here and you're like, oh, talk, please come talk to me because I bet I can come up with 20 ideas on the spot because I came up with 500 and it, that took me like an hour to do that. So here's a video that I did. I think that you should just play to your strengths. You know yourself. You know that you could sit down and bang out an ebook in 20 minutes, or you know that you could sit down in front of a camera, record a five minute video that explains all of the frequently asked questions that you have. So play to your strengths and really connect with your audience and what, um, what's gonna add value to them. But the title of your freebie is so important. And there's a few things that I'm gonna talk about here in a second, but just know that how you label things and how you really get the attention of your audience is so important. And then give it a genuine shock and awe factor. That kind of just goes back to like 500. Like I've had people tell me, they're like, I went and grabbed that because I didn't believe that you had 500. And I'm like, no, there's, there's over 500 there. So you want it to give it a genuine shock and awe factor. You don't want it to just be going back to like the free hug coupon because everyone's getting that. You want it to be $5, the beautiful package, $5 gift card. Because that is something that's like, hey, I'll give you my email for that. Okay, so does anybody have any questions about freebies? <laughs> no questions. Okay, we're going to keep going. So building a landing page. So what is the purpose of a landing page? Well, it's all about the value exchange. So how many people in here have a website for their podcast? Okay, got probably a little less than half of the room. So the podcast and the website don't necessarily, like you don't have to have a website to make this work. And I'm gonna show you some specific examples. But the idea behind the landing page is to have a place to house your freebie and then in exchange for the freebie, someone is giving you their email address and they're saying, yes, I wanna hear from you. So you wanna make sure that it is something of value that your audience is looking for and something that can help them because that email that you're getting, it is a value exchange. Okay, how to format your landing page. And this is where people's heads start to explode, so if that happens, then you know, it's just, it's okay, we're gonna get through this together, I promise. So, name your freebie clearly, and I have an example up here, I don't know if everybody can see, Everything that's here, it's not on this page, it's on the next one. But I want you to name your freebie clearly. So once you've created it, I want you to package it neatly too. So speak to those pain points. So back to your ideal listener. I want you to name it, not just like, hey, here's top five podcast tips. Like be very specific on the problem that you're speaking to and how it could help them. Use those for your copy, like use those for how you're speaking to your audience and make sure that it makes sense to them. Y'all, my audience, like, I don't wanna call us dumb, we're not dumb, we're very simple. But whenever somebody starts talking in very academic speak, we're just kinda, we just kinda like, we're smart people, but we like to just, you know, kind of be very casual. Like my audience is, we're not formal. I'm not gonna stand up here like I say y'all all the time in social media, in my emails, because that is how I speak. But if that is not you, if you are more of a formal person like an Amy Porterfield, she is very formal, she is very buttoned up, and that is how she speaks to her audience most of the time. So what problems do you solve? Again, that's the freebie. How can you help them? And call out specifically who your freebie is for. But keep it simple, keep it simple. Again, you don't want to like someone to look at it and think, oh, that sounds great in theory, but I gotta run to go pick up the kids and then we have soccer practice and everything. Like you want to keep it super simple. That way they're, if they don't have time to sit down and read it, they're like, I can't do this right now, but I'm gonna come back because that sounds really good. That sounds like something that can really help me. So, and not too much text. So again, this is on, a landing page that could be on your website or it could be through your email <coughs> service provider. This is something that we're gonna talk, I'm gonna get into like specifics on the tools that I use and email service providers and everything like that. But just know that
keep it simple because no one likes a cluttered web page. This is 2019, okay? We're not living in the land of <laughs> dust and like just, oh my gosh, y'all. I just, yeah, right? Floppy disk? We're not there anymore. So this says up here at the top, it says best resource for any podcaster. So I'm telling you right here at the top, this is for podcasters. If you land on this page and you're a YouTuber, you're going to say, that's probably not for me. Or if you're a blogger, you're going to self-identify, that's not for me. So, And then it addresses their problem. So it says, never run out of ideas for your podcast. That is something that my audience tells me all the time. Crystal, I'm so scared. I'm going to give my best content in the first 10 episodes, and then I'm never going to have anything to talk about ever again. I hear it all the time. People are terrified of running out of podcast ideas. And I'm like, nope, nope, right here. You have a few years worth of content in this freebie right here. But I tell them, you're not gonna run out of content. And then another thing is the title. So it's very important to make it clear. That way people know what they're getting. Oh man, that's some good stuff, right? So I wanted to just pause just for a second because I want you to comment below what is something that you can offer your audience? So put in the comments what your podcast is about, or if you're creating one, what you want your podcast to be about, and what's something for free that you could offer your community, whether it's a discount, a free resource, just something of value to your audience. So put in the comments below what's something that you can offer to your audience. Okay, let's get back to the talk. It's the thank you page. So this is where we're going to kind of differentiate people that have websites and people that don't. So there are two ways to do this, again, with a website and without. So if you have a website, this is an opportunity for you to further the relationship with your audience. And I'm going to give you some examples of how you can do this. You can do this with a video. So if you were to go to my website and sign up for any of the freebies that I've mentioned, you're going to land on a thank you page that says, I'm so excited that you downloaded this resource and while you're at it, why don't you go check out my podcast? Like here's a link to it below this video. So if you're not thrilled about video, then this could be something just super simple because whether you have a website or you don't, all of the email service providers, they want you, they, they're going to send you your audience to their website unless you tell them otherwise. So you want to make sure you're taking advantage of this is a crucial opportunity to deepen the connection. Even if it's as simple as join our Facebook group or follow me on Instagram or we have all cool, like a whole bunch of really cool things going on on the YouTube channel. It's just another opportunity for you to get in front of your audience or we have a cool event coming up. It's just a great opportunity for you to take advantage of that. Social media, your top resources. So, okay, so if you don't have a website, this is what I want you to do. You are limited in the message that you can show. So through an email service provider, they may only give you a little snippet of text that you can say, thanks for signing up. Maybe you can't even send them anywhere else. Like you can't even reroute them to your Apple podcast, you know, the podcast page. But I want you to take advantage of this, even if it's just a simple message that says, hey, reply to this email and tell me what you want to learn from my podcast or what I can help you with. What are your biggest pain points? If you don't know those things, this is a great time. If you're building your email list, you're building your audience, it's a great time to really get to know them. And it's an opportunity to build trust and authority. So we're going to get into the welcome sequence. So what is a welcome sequence? Welcome, please come in. And I always say this with the podcast too. It's almost like you're a host. Like you want to welcome them in with open arms, but you also want to tell them, I love you, get out of my house, it's time to leave. <laughs> because you don't want to just cut them, you know, like, I have a whole other thing. You don't want to just want to cut it off. You want to send them graciously out the door like a good host. But a welcome sequence is a sequence of emails that a new subscriber receives whenever they do, they opt in for your freebie. So I know this is really where your eyes are going to glaze over. You probably lost you like five slides ago. It's okay. Just stick with me here. We can get through this because this is the back end. This is not what your audience sees automatically. It's something that you create 
and then they experience at another time or they could experience it immediately and I'm going to show you. So it's three to five emails. It could deliver your freebie. It can introduce you and your podcast. Again, it's another way for you to have that touch point of creating a deeper connection with your audience. You could offer advice, give resources, you could have them. So if you opt in to my, to my email list, you go to the thank you page where it has the video, and then that triggers a welcome sequence to start. And in my very first email, I kind of just introduced myself. Hey, I'm Crystal. We moved to Houston, and I didn't know what I was doing. And then, like, I had started this podcast and did all this. Like, it kind of gives the whole backstory. And then there's another email that says, because I talk to mostly entrepreneurs, so I tell them these are the top five podcasts that you should go listen to because that's something I get asked all the time. What do you listen? To? What podcast do you like? So I think giving them. Um, great resources is great um, or is a it's a way to deepen that connection so why is this important it gives you a way to further the relationship because you don't want to be a one-hit wonder so this is really important because I have because I do this I do this as part of my marketing strategy I opt into a lot of lists because I'm like oh I want to see what she's doing I want to see what he's doing I want to see how this all works and I can't even tell you how many times I've opted into something and I'm like, this is not very good. I'm just like, unsubscribe, see you later. And that's gonna happen too. Within email marketing, it's going to happen and that's okay because you wanna only attract the people that are gonna be your ride or dies, right? The people that are gonna be with you to show up to your events, listen to your podcast. So you wanna be the go-to expert in what your podcast is about. You like. You want to be the first person that pops into your audience's mind whenever your topic comes up. So how does this all work, right? So the first email, if you're doing a three to five email sequence, so you're delivering your freebie as promised, right? You could do this actually on your thank you page if you wanted to. There are many ways to do this, but I just kind of wanted to give you a brief overview of how it all, all the puzzle pieces fit together. Then you can have a welcome or an intro email that's like, hey, let's get to know, like, hi, I'm Crystal, I have the Profit Podcast, and this is how I got into this. And just kind of, you know, it doesn't have to be something long. Like, it's keeping it casual and in the voice that you normally speak in is the best way to go. If you try to sound like someone else, people are gonna get turned off by that. Just show up and be you. The best way that you know how to be yourself. And then if you have a business or you work with clients or you like, this is a great opportunity to tell people stories of you helping someone else. Like, Hey, I, you know, you opted into this resource about being a creative who's struggling with this. Well, I've actually helped this person and you can go see them now. Like this is their testimony. This is how I've helped them become awesome. You know, whatever it is you want to say. And then the fourth one is resources or offering help. So this could be your fourth and your fifth. Like, I mean, honestly, this could go on forever and ever. But do y'all see, like, like I said, I talk about business. Do I say anywhere in here, this is where you sell. This is where you sell some more. And this is where you sell. Those are the people that I opt done mm -mm, out of my inbox because you just want my money. You're not here to help me. Like, I am just a number on the scale for you. I am just like, oh, yeah, there's more cash. For, like, I can see it. It's like the writing on the wall. You want to be the person that is the go-to person for them. You want to be the person where they see it and they're like, oh, I can't wait to read Ozil's email because he's going to send me some more resources. He's going to tell me about those events going on. He's going to tell me about these other cool events that I should go to because he's the person I trust. He took time to get to know my problems and to speak directly to me. But you want to add value no matter what you do because you want to get to the know, like, and trust factor with your audience because this is going to impact how your podcast grows over time because you can use your email list to get more podcast downloads. You can send an email to them every time you put out a new episode or every time you have something else going on. Again, going back to the qualified leads, you can do so much with an email list that trusts you. And I will say this, never ever abuse 
your email list, whatever you do, because that's something that you can't get back. You, okay, so how do you use all this as a podcast, right? Because you're like, okay, <coughs> email marketing, very basic, <coughs> but still makes my head explode whenever I talk about it. Because y'all, this is something that is always evolving because technology is moving at the speed of Google, right? <laughs> like whatever Google's doing, it's moving so fast. But as of today, you can do all of this on your podcast once you have steps one through four done. That is why I spent so much time on that because that is the foundational stuff that you have to do in order for this to work on your podcast. Because once you get to this part, it's not hard. It's not going to show you why. It's very simple. You just need a URL. You just need a link to where someone's going to go opt in for whatever you have to share. And then you announce it on your podcast. It's as simple as saying, here, I have to this up here. So you can do your landing page, or if you have an opt-in form, which we'll get into that with your email service provider. For those of you that don't have a website, you still receive a link that you can put in your podcast show notes for people to go to. Well, I hope you enjoyed this video on how to grow an email list with a podcast. Make sure you hit that thumbs up button, subscribe below. That way you don't miss any future episodes that we put out on this channel and make sure that you check back every single week because we have some really cool stuff that's coming up that I'm super excited about. I just like knocked my keyboard almost off my desk because that's how excited I am. Y'all, I geek out on podcasting. It's so much fun for me. So make sure you sign up for the free five-day podcast bootcamp. You'll find the link below this video. Make sure you check out these other amazing videos here. And remember, keep it up. We all have to start somewhere.